Welcome back. So we've been walking through this document, Roadmap 2030, on how control will be central in solving some of the world's most pressing societal challenges in the, the coming years and decades. And today I'm going to zoom in on one of my favorite chapters, Chapter 7, on ethics, fairness, and regulatory issues. So I think it's really cool that this uh, is a continuing thread actually through all of these chapters, but really culminating in chapter seven, which is not just seeing control theory as a mathematical infrastructure for you know, controlling a dynamical system, but really understanding that when we use control to address societal scale challenges, there absolutely is a human element, and we need to look at our control theory solutions through this, this, this societal lens, through the lens of how this impacts human beings. And so that's one of the things I really, really like about, about this, uh, this chapter here, is this idea that there is a kind of higher level optimization, if you will. So control theory, in my mind, you are kind of optimizing a controller to achieve some objective subject to the constraints of the dynamics of your system, to the rules of your system. But again, when we think about this at a societal level, there are other you know, costs and, uh, and objectives than just stabilizing a system or just reducing greenhouse gas emission or, or whatever the objective may be. We might just not want to just decrease greenhouse gas emissions or make our power grid more, uh, more resilient and more stable, but we might want to do so in a way that is equitable, where the benefits of this are you know, seen by, by everybody, by diverse groups and not just a small subset of the population, okay? That's something we might want to explicitly optimize over, and that's the kind of thing that we think about here is what are the ethical and equity and fairness aspects of these various societal scale control uh, solutions, whether it is autonomy or self-driving cars or the sharing economy or you know things like Uber and Airbnb, how do we develop these infrastructures so that it benefits people broadly and not you know again a small subset of people? That's a really really important thing. Again, when we think about societal challenges, is to think about this through the lens of society. Society is formed of humans. How do we make sure that these technologies are um, you know good for people's mental mental and physical health? How do we make sure that, that uh, the decisions that are being made are transparent and uh, you know, really clear so that people can actually have discussions on the ethics without there being this, this uh, convoluted opacity of, of how these control decisions are being made? I think that's really, really important. Um, and again, this is applicable to everything we've talked about before in every domain, whether it's an emerging technology in machine learning for control and big data, whether it is you know, the electrification of the power, uh, you know, the electrification of, of all of our devices and the resilience of the power grid, whether it's autonomy, self-driving cars, robotics, you name it, there are absolutely ethics, equity, fairness, uh, and regulatory issues that we need to be thinking about and we can't just think about those as something after we develop our control solution, now we to think about the ethics of it. It really should be um, on the design stage in the, in the drawing board, okay? I actually think it's kind of interesting, control theorists in, in the past, you know, decades past, often were brought in after a system was designed. Let's say you designed an aircraft and you designed an engine and you put everything together and it doesn't quite work the way you wanted it to. That's when, you know, 30 years ago, you would call your control engineer and have them come try to fix it. So control theory was like a band-aid on a pre-designed system. Now in the modern era, we're kind of smart enough to know that control theory should be in the room at the design stage, when the you know the actual design optimization is happening at, on the drawing board, you need control theorists there to say what's possible and what's not possible and things like that. Similarly, I think you know we can't think of ethics and fairness and regulatory issues as something we do after we design a solution. They have to be in that design process. Okay, it's kind of obvious when you say it. This chapter makes it very clear and gives lots of good examples and recommendations for how we can think about this from a societal lens.
Um, and one of the uh, examples that, um, and this is, you know, there's some cool pictures, uh, you know, autonomy is not just going to be self-driving cars, it's going to be uh, three-dimensional urban air mobility, um, presumably we'll have, you know, the ability to move goods and services in the air and on ground. This is going to have safety issues and privacy issues, all kinds of issues, but it's also going to solve some real problems, and that's how technology always is. You have, uh, anytime you, you have a new capability, you also have new issues associated with it, we need to address those head on. Um, one of the examples I think is really uh, kind of illuminating and, and kind of helped me think about this um, is this idea of, of so-called energy justice. So we are trying to make our power grid more renewable and cleaner, uh, more solar, more wind. This is going to address you know, big societal issues like climate change, um, also resiliency and redundancy and things like that. There's good reasons to do this for, for lots of reasons. But we want to make it so that the benefits of a clean power grid and you know clean air and clean uh, a clean society are something that everybody experiences and benefits from. So, you know, currently to install solar panels on your house, it's pretty expensive, even with subsidies. And so that is you know in many places in the world a luxury that you know only a certain uh, you need a certain amount of, of wealth to be able to afford those solar panels to be able to afford to contribute to that clean uh, power grid. And so we really need to be thinking through, you know, in our optimization problem, how do we make sure that we're optimizing for a large distributed societal benefit and, and societal um, kind of gains from these new technologies that has obviously issues and benefits for societal stability and health. And, you know, there's long-term benefits that we really need to be optimizing over by not having uh, these solutions only benefit you know, the, the wealthiest people that can afford them. Okay, really important things for us to be thinking about. And I always think about this, when I tell my students, you know, control theory is an optimization problem. Machine learning is an optimization problem. Most of engineering is an optimization problem. If you neglect to add terms in your optimization that quantify things you care about, like, you know, health and stability and things like that. If you, if you, if you fail to include he, the human element in your optimization, you are in fact making a choice of what you're optimizing over. And that's just something we need to be thinking about more generally is, you know, these mathematical optimizations, there are human costs and human benefits, and we need to be thinking about optimizing those as well. And you can think about a lot of those systems as actual dynamical systems and control systems. It's not always, you know, there's ethical gray areas. How do you optimize the control of a disease when there's people's lives at stake? It's, it's a murky, messy problem, but I think we owe it to ourselves to address it head on as engineers and as problem solvers and actually include those terms in our cost functions. We know, you know economics does this, and there is probably some benefit of bringing control theory into those discussions. Okay, uh, huge, huge topic. You know, I can't do it justice. Please go read about it. Read about it throughout all of these chapters. But again, something I really, really like about this document is that it is not just kind of numerical or theoretical solutions to these problems. It really thinks about control theory um, and its impacts from a societal lens as well, which I think is super important. All right, thank you.